This is Brian. Today we'll be discussing more loops, this time the for loop. So type dim i as integer. And we're going to say for i equals 1 to 10. And then console dot write line. And we're going to write the i variable. Notice how we did not declare this variable. Yes, I know I've, I've kind of barked at you in the past. You can actually go ahead and declare this. Now we've set the value for it. I'm sorry, we have declared and now we're setting the value. Alright, now for i equals 1, so we're setting the value here to 10. If we run that, what's going to happen? Let's find out. 1 through 10. You see that we have not incremented i. We haven't done i plus equals, whoops, plus equals 1. Let's run that and see what happens. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So what's going on here, as you can see, is the for loop is automatically incrementing it for us. So we need, don't need extra verbiage to do it. We can just rely on the .NET Framework's built-in functionality to increment that for us. Once again, we'll run that so you can see exactly what's going on here. 1 through 10, we're not incrementing it. It's doing it for us. Pretty handy function. You can also enumerate objects. Whoops, getting a little ahead of myself here. Dim s as string equals, and we'll just say hello. And then dim c as care. Whoops. Now, a string is made up of characters. Each letter is a character. And we're going to use a for each loop. So for each character in the string. And we are going to write out that character. Run your, well, let's put another blank line in here so you can see what's going on. Now you'll see both examples run at the same time. Whoops, what did we do here? We made a booboo. You see our first one's working and our second one's not. Did you spot the error? It's because I put the S instead of the C. Ah, yes, good old fashioned debugging. Now we get the desired result. We're going one through 10 and then we're printing out each character in the string. Now why do you need the for loop? Couldn't you just use a do loop? Well you could, but the for loop is actually considered safer and it involves a lot less coding and less coding equals less bugs, less problems to fix later on unless you're a horrible typer like I am in which case you're just always going to have bugs in your code but as you can see it's much more convenient to have the framework do the counting for you rather than you constantly incrementing a value yourself so that's the for loop and the for each loop now we'll be using the for each loop much more when we get into collections and lists and arrays, which are other tutorials. I uh, hope you found this one educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.